What started with a NAS that was connected to one PC by an unmanaged switch turned into multiple NAS devices, two Proxmox clusters, a PFSense firewall, plus a ton of Unify switches and access points to bring them all together. The problem is, I hate it. I have a two node Proxmox cluster where one of the servers died to what I believe is a bad motherboard. It was replaced with a mini PC Proxmox cluster that's literally laying on the floor because I have no real place to put it right now. My main switch is barely being used because it's in a location that simply doesn't make sense now that I've lived in this house for a few years and understand the existing Cat5e wiring layout better than I did. And yes, unfortunately, it's Cat5e. My security cameras are constantly teetering with disconnections due to PoE limits, because the 24 port switch that should be powering most of them, again, is in a location where it can't. Link aggregation isn't set up on any of the switches, so I basically have one gigabit of throughput from switch to switch. I have two ISP connections, one which I've used as an isolated test network. I've been meaning to add this connection to my main network for load balancing and move the test network to a separate VLAN, and I simply haven't. The truth is, I did the best that I could at the time because there was a lot going on when I moved, but looking back at things, I made just about every single mistake that I could. Some of it was due to existing wiring in an old house that will be too much of an effort to replace, and some of it was from me simply not thinking through things as well as I should have. But I want to fix it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. I plan on replacing just about every single device in this home lab. My firewall, every switch, every access point, my NAS devices. I want to build a true Proxmox cluster that can handle the load so that I don't have devices sitting all over the place. I want most of it to be sitting in a server rack in a location that makes more sense so that I can actually utilize the hardware. I want to configure it all following best practices from a hardware and software perspective, meaning best practices for VMs and containers, a primary and backup VPN connection, on-site and off-site backups, self-hosted applications, and just about everything in between. This is the thing. I know a lot about this stuff, but I am absolutely not an expert on all of this. There will most likely be mistakes made along the way, and if there are, I'd love to hear from you in the comments on where I can improve, which also means that if you subscribe now, you will see the next series where I classify that everything I did in this series is wrong. If that's not a reason to subscribe, then I don't know what is. The other thing is that there is going to be a lot of hardware required. I'll be reaching out to companies to see if they'd like to support the channel by sending hardware, but I will always disclose in the description exactly what was sent to me, and the only hardware that will be used in this series is hardware that I have hand-selected from companies that I have reached out to, and there will also be a bunch of stuff that I buy on my own. So to be clear, there will be no sponsored hardware or software but there may be vendor supplied hardware that I have selected, assuming the vendor will actually send it to me. So since this is the beginning, in this video, we're gonna go over a layout of my existing home lab to show you why everything is set up so poorly and the layout of my future home lab, which will hopefully function better. There are two main goals with this video. The first is to highlight my train of thought on why I am planning on setting everything up the way I am so that you can point out to me what I'm not fully thinking through. And the second is for this video to be the blueprint for this series so that it can be referenced moving forward. Okay, so this is my current home lab. We're not gonna spend that much time on this, but I wanna show you some of the mistakes that I made so that hopefully if you're in this situation, you don't make the same mistakes. So we'll start on my actual network here. I use PFSense as my router and my firewall. On PFSense, I use it for a few things. I have a WireGuard VPN setup, which is my primary. I have an open VPN setup, which is the secondary, which is currently broken. I have a site-to-site -site VPN setup with an off-site unified dream router, which is where my off-site NAS backups go. So all my NAS data gets backed up off-site on a nightly basis. And outside of that, I really just have VLANs and a few minor things set up on PFSense. And this will be changing and I'll get to that in a second. Next is the actual core switch that I have here. It's a USW Pro 24 PoE. This is barely being used. I have probably like eight to 10 things maybe total plugged into it. Um, as you could see, the things that are plugged into it is a two node Proxmox cluster where one of them is currently offline because it's broken. The next is an access point and then a second access point that's connected to a second switch upstairs to a NAS, and then to one surveillance camera. Yes, one. That switch then branches off to two other switches. So they're both USW Lite 16 POEs, and all of this switching and uh, access points are all Unify equipment. These are mainly for surveillance. So this right here, this 
I don't think there's anything plugged into this other than these seven cameras. And that's mainly due to just the location of the wires that I can't get those wires to this switch in a feasible way, but we'll be taking care of that in the new layout. Next, the second one, this is for a few different things. There are six cameras there. There's another access point. This is where the mini PC Proxmox cluster that I referenced earlier is actually sitting on the floor. So generally this would not be here. That's a different problem, but that's kind of out of scope for this. And then we have a USW Flex Mini, which goes to a test to node Proxmox cluster, which I have used to create a lot of tutorials on my website. So the only other thing to mention here is that I have an isolated test network in the top right, which just was mainly used for testing, tutorials, stuff like that. As you can see, there's a lot of problems here. A few of them I want to point out. Everything here, every connection to every switch is a single ethernet cable. So there's no link aggregation and it's all limited to one gigabit. That's problem number one. Problem number two is that both of these switches are constantly running into PoE limit issues, mainly because they do not have enough power to actually run everything. So problem number two. And then problem number three is that some of these access points have a few more hops than I would like. I can't really change a lot of that. It's just due to the wiring in this house, but that's problem number three. Now, we're gonna look at the new home lab here, and it's extremely, extremely different. So we're gonna go through all of this, and I'm gonna talk through why I made some of these decisions, and this is where I'm hoping that you can provide some feedback for me in case you think I'm doing anything wrong or I'm not really thinking this through very well. First, rather than having an isolated test network, both connections will be load balanced on a unified Dream Machine Pro Max. In a perfect world, I'd love to get two of them. I don't know if I can, but I'd love to get two of them to set up shadow mode so I could do a tutorial on that, but we'll get to that. So that will be an active and primary. If the active fiber connection goes down, it will back up to the broadband connection so that internet stays up. Next, everything that was running in PFSense will run on the unified Dream Machine. I know the first question I'm gonna get, why are you switching from PFSense to a unified Dream Machine, bro? The reason is because when I set up PFSense, there was a lot inside of PFSense that did not currently exist inside of a UDM Pro at the time. Things like WireGuard weren't there. There were a few UI differences. It was kind of a little bit of a split between legacy and a new interface. And overall, I thought I would use a lot more in PFSense, but what I've learned is that anytime I go to set something up, it's like an endeavor. I have to spend half an hour, an hour reading documentation, and I'm getting a little tired of that. So I'm looking to scale back in terms of how complex the environment is, but also increase efficiency. And what makes it easier is that the UDM Pro Max has WireGuard VPN. I can do VPN clients, which I couldn't do at the time. That's a big thing for me. There's a lot here, which I'll get to in future tutorials, that has pushed me to this device, and I'm extremely excited to switch from PFSense to this because I think it will be a better overall solution. Next, everything offsite is staying the same. It'll be a site-to-site -site VPN, same. That's where my, my offsite NAS backup will be. The switches is where things start to change here. So I am going to be setting up an aggregation switch. My goal with this aggregation switch is to have everything connected to it, meaning all of the switches, all the main switches, which I'll have a 24 port PoE switch, a 16 port PoE switch, and then the UDM Pro as well. But I want everything to be set up with link aggregation. This will allow me to have technically 20 gigabits of throughput, but also have some redundancy in case one of the lines goes down. The, the lines aren't gonna go down, but in a case where they do, I'll have some sort of redundancy there. So we're gonna be going from one gigabit of throughput to 20 gigabits of throughput, which is gonna be a huge, huge change. Next, getting rid of all that mini PC stuff, getting rid of my two node Proxmox cluster. I wanna build a rack mount Proxmox cluster. I don't know exactly what I wanna run on this. I'm definitely gonna be using high availability, so I wanna run Ceph. The problem is I don't think that it's gonna make sense from a performance perspective. I don't think I'm gonna have enough storage, so I'm probably gonna run into performance issues. So while I'd love to run Ceph for the benefits of the high availability and distributed storage that it provides, 
I don't think it's a realistic option. So I have to figure out if I want to use shared storage or just replication. That will ultimately be dependent on exactly what's running on the device, but very excited. That's all going to be rack mounted. Next is the actual NAS devices. I'm going to have a primary and a secondary NAS device. I have not decided which vendor I'm going to go with. I might go a DIY route and go with something like TrueNAS or Unraid. I might not. I might go with Synology because that's what this channel is generally focused on. But I'm not totally sure which route I wanna take. I just know I want a primary and secondary NAS connection. Next, the 24 port PoE switch is actually gonna be used with this setup. So it's gonna be in a location where I can actually plug all of those cameras into it. So I won't run into any PoE limits. It'll also be easier to just manage everything in one switch rather than having a few, even though there are a few here, it's it's a better layout than it was. And then this will also run to three separate APs with one of them as a goal being an outdoor uh, access point. Next, the 16 port PoE switch. Due to the way that this house is actually laid out, I can't get away from this switch. I'd love to just route everything back. It's not realistic. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to attempt to run probably about a 150 foot fiber cable. I don't know how that's gonna go. It's probably not gonna go very well, but we're gonna try regardless. So if I run one, might as well try to screw things up even further and run two of them. This, there's a chance this is not gonna actually be link aggregation. I'm setting this up because in a perfect world, I'd love for it to be. But the truth is, I don't really need link aggregation here. It would really just be for primary and backup purposes because there are cameras here. So that's number one. And then number two is I don't know if I can get a fiber cable, even one fiber cable out there, but I'm gonna try. So this PoE switch will be more powerful than the current USW Lite 16 PoE that I'm running. So it will be able to handle the full load for all of my access points, as well as routing to a few other test devices. So there are various PCs and IoT devices and stuff that spawn off of these switches that I didn't include in this. But generally, this is gonna give me the functionality that I need. And then I'll still continue to have my two node Proxbox cluster for all of my testing and tutorials. Now the most fluid portion of this, and this is really just a placeholder, this is probably gonna change. These are going to be the VLANs that I think I wanna set up. I think I've decided on this. Management is really just gonna be all of the switches, all of the access points, any management interfaces potentially for the servers, stuff like that. I don't need a, a slash 24 subnet, but there's no reason not to. I don't wanna overcomplicate things even further, so we're gonna leave that the way that it is. Trusted. Trusted VLAN. This is really just going to be for my PCs. So my PCs, my laptop, mobile phones, stuff like that. This is an overkill subnet as well, but it'll be on its own VLAN. I can set up firewall rules. It's perfect. IoT. So the IoT and the guest networks will both, they're orange here because they will both have access to the internet, but they will not be able to access any internal subnets. And all of that will be managed with firewall rules. Surveillance. This is for all of these cameras. So the surveillance VLAN will not have permission to access anything. So with firewalls, it will be blocked off from all local IP addresses plus the internet. I don't want these devices accessing anything. And then finally, the dev network is exactly what I was using that isolated test network for. It's really just the dev network that if I get a device, I wanna test it out, I can put it on that dev network, access it from my trusted VLAN, and then do what I have to do, and then it doesn't get messied up with any of these other VLANs. Finally, I'm gonna have a primary, secondary, and a site-to-site -site VPN, and I believe these are the subnets that I'm going to use for it. Primary, I'm gonna use WireGuard. Been using it for years, it's been totally reliable, I really like it, it's been fast, it's great, it's not changing. Next is OpenVPN as a backup. Like I said earlier, my PFSense, Set up right now with OpenVPN, I think the certificate expired because I didn't use it in so long and it doesn't work. So I'd like to set it up as a backup as well. And the site to site is what we went over, really just for offsite backups. So there's a lot here. And I acknowledge that it's probably gonna seem like overkill. And it probably is overkill, but I'm gonna do it because this is what I do. So to summarize, that is the old home lab and the new home lab. My goal is to really highlight just about everything. I don't only wanna keep this to hardware, I wanna keep this to hardware and software. So potentially getting into Proxmox, getting into actually implementing things like Docker containers and how you can manage everything securely, stuff like that. As I said, I'm not an expert on everything, but I'll make the situation clear in those videos when the time comes. So I'm super excited about this. I've been planning this for months and I just have to do it. I have to stop planning and I have to start doing. But if you saw anything, anything in what we just went over, 
that you have feedback for me where I could change, I could potentially make this better. I would love to hear it because I don't want to make mistakes as I'm going through all of this. And if I could stop it now, I would love to. There are things that are probably going to change, but hopefully this gives us a good core starting point so that we can kind of move on and start to implement this step by step. So I know this was a lot. If you want to see any of this, please consider subscribing to the channel because I'm going to be going over all of this with various different tutorials, explaining why things are set up the way they are. But if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.